Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, for returning viewers, thank you for watching and anybody that's new, welcome. So I was gonna do another Thanksgiving Django Block one that I'm excited to do, but I thought of something else that we're gonna do today and I got really excited about that. So I'm gonna try to do two coffins today. Um, a little bit, both are gonna be a little bit different. So we are going to start using the Dollar Tree Jenga blocks. And those of you that are new, I use Well Bond. You can use Gorilla Glue. I have never used the actual wood glue, so I'm not sure. Uh, I did have a girl tell me that, uh, and I said it in my last video and I can't remember her name right now. Uh, Hobby Lobby does sell Well Bond for my friends that are in the US. You can buy it at Rona or Lowe's here in Canada. I know Michael sells at Amazon. This is just my preference, but whatever you want to use, as long as it's not hot glue, I say never use hot glue unless you're only gluing a couple blocks off. Plus it doesn't seal properly and it will eventually just break. So we are going to start with the first coffin, which I'm going to put a mummy in. And then hopefully we'll have enough time that I'm going to do a second coffin, which is going to be a shelf. So we're going to stop, start with the top part of the coffin which are just gonna glue 10 blocks across. Now I suggest you can buy one of these Carpenter L-shaped rulers at DT when I'm gluing, putting them together there and just making their solid, moving them up like this and just keep going down. That's how I try to keep my blocks as straight as can be because the blocks are not always super straight. So this will be the top part. Then we're gonna have two top sides of the coffin there's going to be eight on each sides, so that will be 16. I'm going to probably have to adjust this. So we're going to sit the top part right on that part. The next we're going to do are the side bottoms, I'm going to call them. No, I just want to make sure this gets in the frame. And we're going to glue these kind of on an angle like this. Oh, it's just gonna make the picture. And I think it's crooked on one side. And then we're gonna do the bottom. I think it's just like that. I don't wanna stick my head up in the camera and uh, you won't see it. Okay, like that. And then the bottom piece would be eight blocks across and that will be right underneath the bottom. So the top and the bottom go underneath and the bottom sits right on top. Now it will be angled, don't worry about that. The bottom's not too bad. The top will have a little bit of an angle. But you see where the little holes are? Wait, let me grab a thing here. Uh, sorry guys, I'm trying to find something I can thin enough. These little corners here, you're just gonna use a hot glue and just exactly say how I position this. This is how you're just gonna glue it and you're gonna leave it for hours. I always wait for the, the glue does dry pretty fast, but I want it to be solid. So I do usually wait a couple hours to let it totally dry. Now, once you do that, in these cracks here, and you can put them here, here, Wherever you have the, just a little bit of cracks, you can put extra glue and you can actually just put hot glue because you're not gonna see it when we get around to covering it. You're not gonna notice it anyways. So I'm gonna get these glued on and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that I had it, have it glued together, I actually just went in the cracks, really not just very messy looking on both sides and on the inside. Oh, that one I didn't do, but the side as well as this uh, with hot glue. So you're gonna need um, a black foam board. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Black, I just assume, because we're gonna do the coffin black. And I just cut a piece off the foam board. Now, I wouldn't use scissors. Make sure you use the X-Acto knife. Make sure you got, your, you got some mats down when you cut it so you don't cut the surface that you're on. Sorry, we're having a huge thunderstorm here, if you, hear the, if you can hear that. Um, so all I did was put this down on top of, and I traced it with, an, with a, I have like one of those white 
eye pencils that I never use. And, um, or you can use chalk, one or the other. You're not going to see the marks anyways when you have it. And then I just traced it out. Now with cutting it, because you're on the outside when you're tracing it, you just want to cut it a little bit more on the inside as you go along. The bottom won't be need to cut because I already had it there. And then we're going to place that on the back. Now that I got the shape cut out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some well bond. The only thing I would say about using a hot glue gun is that by the time you try to go all the way down here with the gun, it's already going to be too, um, it's already going to be drying here. So just from past experience. So I am just going to use some well bond. You can use any glue just as long as you get it situated on there. And if you do find some pieces sticking out, I did a little bit. I just went over, used a ruler and the X-Acto knife just to get a perfect fit on it. Now that I let it sit for a few hours, I have the backing glued on. And I wanted, instead of just painting the Jenga blocks black, uh, I wanted to do uh, something a little different. I wanted to give it texture. I haven't, I haven't done paper mache since I was in... Uh, grade school my son just did a project the other day not the other day at the end of the school year for um for his art class and I thought it'd be a cool idea to add some texture on the blocks itself this way we can cover up the glue I'm not sure it's like I said it's been a long time I'm just gonna want to paint it on so I'm just gonna use some uh the matte mod podge and I already cut up, a, or I didn't cut up, I just ripped apart a bunch of uh, paper towels. And I'm just gonna put it down and I'm just gonna keep going. So I don't know how many layers I'm gonna do. I just wanted a different texture and see, I think it'll turn out really good. So something like this, I just ripped up four paper, paper towels and I just wanna see. So I don't know if I'm just gonna do extra layers but I just thought it would give it a different look to it and you can cover up the areas where you put the hot glue. So I'm going to finish that and I'll come back, let you know if I did more than one layer and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I let it dry overnight and a little bit of the texture. I really like the look of it. You can see there's some spots. I'm not going to worry about it. Don't worry about the backside because this will be covered. Same with the other side, super dry. I'm just going to take some black paint and give it a good coat on the inside and the outside. All right, so once uh, I, I did two coats, I did a, a heavy coat, the first one, and then I did a second coat, which was just a, any spots that I had on it. But once it dried, it was really, I found it was just uh, very dull black, you know, how the paint dries. So I went over with Mod Podge and I just liked how it had the shiny effect only because I'm gonna put something in here that's gonna be satin. So I wanted to change the look and I just really like it. It's still a little bit wet in a few spots. Now, once for the backing, what we're gonna do, so I just took a piece of um, foam board and I just put it over the foam board like I did with the, the back part, traced it out and then I cut about that much smaller and then you have to cut it a few times. You can see I put left to right because one side's a little bit off than others and you just wanna make sure it fits in there. And even if there's gaps, there's a little bit of gaps, that's all, that's fine because you're not gonna see it. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Uh, I wanna use, uh, and I don't have it, it's still in the basement, but I had um, Dollar Tree sell Z satin pillowcases and I used the other half, I guess, for I cut, it's already cut open and I actually ironed it because it was really wrinkly. Um, I don't know what I used it for. I used it for another craft and I don't remember which craft I used it for. It must have been from last year's. Uh, so I want to put it over the board, but I don't want it just, you know, having the just basically flat look. That's, I mean, it just looks more cardboardy. So I had a piece of this and I think it was just a big square. I think it was for like fake fake snow or something like that. So I'm just gonna hot glue that on just to give it a little bit of a, 
a little bit of a rise, just a little bit. Now, I did say I was gonna do a mummy and I totally changed my mind because I found something from my Halloween stash from last year and we'll get to that after. Um, so we're gonna change it up and actually the little idea. So I'm just gonna hot glue that on. So I like the look of this, it looks a lot more soft. I'm gonna have to cut it around once that's glued. And it doesn't have to be perfect on the back. You can just trim it along the sides and hot glue it on. So then that will be the insert inside the coffin. Now I did want to mention earlier, just because of little bottles, I know they're they're cheap enough at DT. I did run out because I did go out today. I did run out last night when I was um, putting the paper mache on, and I just ended up using this uh, white glue, and it totally worked fine. And they did have one, and I bought another one today. Um, they had a bigger bottle for I think a dollar twenty-five. A bigger one so you could probably use that instead of the Mod Podge just because it's such a smaller bottle but the other bottle was really big and I think it's still in the bag by the door but just to let you know that all right so I actually glued it on to the foam paper um, I didn't get I just did it with the hot glue like I mentioned earlier you're not gonna see it so I just want to show you it looks so good I really love the paper mache in it so the next thing you do is just going to plop it in we are going to hot glue it and depending on what you want so my idea kind of changed from the mummy like i was saying earlier on previous uh uh video when i was recording and then i went through because some of my dts uh, a couple of them i've been to don't have any other halloween stuff out so I went looked through my stash and I found the um, the skeleton bride skeleton. I don't know why she has a black bow, but all right. And I thought it would be so perfect to have that hanging because it's going to be upright. So I'm going to try to put something on here. I haven't figured it out yet. I just don't like it's just kind of messy up there. And if you cut it off, I'm just gonna figure it away. Off camera, otherwise this video will be super long. But um, anyways, so I wanted in here, they did have, oh, what am I doing here? It did have um, a black rope hanging from the top. I did cut it off. So because it's gonna be upright, I'm just gonna move this here. I just got a cup hook, just like this. And I'm not going to do it while I'm on the screen with you guys because it'll be forever. You're going to pick the center point between here. You can measure it. And we're going to do it more to the front just because you don't want it too far in the back. And you're going to screw that in. Now, I already checked. And the little cup hook. And I will paint the cup hook, cup hook black so you won't see it. And it just goes right in there and will hook nicely with it being right about as much as you can. So then it will be hanging. Now, I'm just going to take this off here. Now you can put something else too. Maybe you want to hang, you know, you have a witch um, or something. I mean, I just like the, the fact with the skeleton. So now that it's done, I'm going to put it upright. And if you know, it's, I mean, it's stable, but I want something solid on the bottom. So DT has these little, I, I don't know if they use them for the Easter. It doesn't really say, it just says wood. Now, there was a different one I wanted and I couldn't find in DT that I saw before, but that's okay. So we're going to use this one and you're just going to glue it down. Now you can see under the camera, I'm going to position it more to the back. I am going to use some well bond glue to glue it down. But before I do that, I'm just going to give it a coat of um, just white paint to cover the wood. Once I get that glued on, with the white paint. I just have some Dollarama rocks. I wanna put some rocks uh, down on top of the wood, not high or anything. Also, it gives it weight for the board so it just won't flip over and it gives it a little bit uh, 
stability I find more than just leaving it like this. So I'm gonna paint that, get the rocks on. I'm gonna figure something with the thing and then we're gonna do uh, just two more little things to this and then we're gonna move on to the next coffin. All right, so I finished gluing on the rocks and I did it all the way around. When I did do the white, I actually just brushed some gray on it because it's just the speckle of rocks that I was doing on there. And I did it on the back as well. So, oh, and I just painted it black and put a coat of Mod Podge um, just to seal the paint on so when you won't see the hook when you actually hook the skeleton. Now, I know I said earlier, I don't know how this has a bow tie and it's supposed to be, and I didn't like the top of the head, and I think I said that earlier, so I want to give it some hair. So I am going to cut the veil off, and it's kind of gl glued on here in the back. Oh, no, it's not. It's just there. I'm going to cut it off and take all the remnants off. I am going to put it back on, but I want to put some female, or female, I want to put some hair on it. And I'm going to take this bow tie off, and I noticed that it doesn't go through all the way. Uh, there's no hole or anything, so I'm just going to use a blow dryer, and the hot glue should just be able to pull it right off and clean it off. So I grabbed this hair band. Now, if you've seen my Jenga block, um, uh, sorry, unicorn um, that I made, um, I can't even remember, a couple months ago, I you can get these hair bands at Dollar Tree. They come in all a bunch of different colors. I had a black on hand when I bought the other ones. So on the headband itself, I already took it off. I just took one of the, you know, Dollar Tree's little, where's that little knife? Of course I can't find that little knife now. It's just that little round silver one. Oh, here it is. And I just cut it along slowly on the headband and it all came off because it has elastics on each side, but I already cut them. I should put an elastic on this side before this gets all unraveled for later project. Now, when I cut it off, I did this amount. which keeps the braid and the hair. So I'm going to take that off and cut it down really, really good. The veil anyways, and I'll put the veil back on after. I'm gonna, I'm, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do it right now. I'm just, this is so long to play with to show you guys. I'm just gonna cut it right here for now. Obviously it's not gonna stay that long, but. I'm gonna wrap it around the head and glue it on. So there's already the braid there, so it gives it a nice design like it actually, and I know you're not gonna be able to see the face. I'm gonna glue it all the way around. You're not gonna see the back anyway, so you don't need the hair on the back. I'm gonna give it some bangs. I'm gonna do one section on the side like this, obviously cutting it shorter. I'm gonna do the little section here, which is some bangs and Obviously, I'm going to cut it a lot shorter than that. And I will then just attach the veil. I probably can leave the veil on by the looks of it. Yeah, I don't need to take it off. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to cut that little piece so you don't see it. Actually, you don't need to take the veil off. And I'm just going to hot glue it right around the back of there, to the back of the head. And it should come out really cute. So once I get that off, we'll move on. All right, I just wanted to show you. So I didn't end up cutting the bangs just because they were on an angle. So I actually just flipped them around and tied a bit of the hair back with a ponytail. You can't see it from behind. Uh, and I just cut the hair shorter. I think it looks a lot better than the bow tie that was on there. I'm just gonna see, you can see, I had a little diamond that fell out of my one of my earrings. It's just uh, a cheap little diamond. I put it on the finger. I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, up in the corner here, I did uh, DT has these flowers with the little skull and that was the only thing that I had in my local DT. They were doing inventory so I wasn't able to get out uh, their Halloween stuff yet. But I just popped off one flower. I'm just gonna put it up in the corner just to give it some color. 
I also just pulled some little black, I guess they're little branches on there. I'm just gonna hot glue it right there and add a little flower. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out my camera here and put it up in the corner. And I'm just gonna hot glue those on. Now, let me just change the angle. Now on the bottom here, uh, I just have this little spider from DT that I am just, it actually comes right in the flowers. Some of the flowers that came in, I think it was the purple ones that came with the little uh, spider. So I'm just going to stick it on there. It's hard to see, but if I move the camera here, you can see, you can see it more than like on there than against the black. I'm going to do that. I took the little clips from DT, the little clipboards, the little chalkboards. And I got my friend's husband to write on there. Just, I thought, uh, I'm not, I, not, not that I can write, but I just thought it was just good. And the little sign, it just says, till death do us part. Thought it was fitting with the veil and the idea with the skeleton. And I just used a little bag of sticks that DT got in. They're just a bunch of little sticks. I just hot glued it on the back. And I'm just going to stick it on the side here, build some rocks and hot glue it up. Once I get that done and have it properly placed with the rocks, um, I've seen this done before. I haven't personally done it myself. I thought it'd be cool. You get a red crayon and you just take a barbecue lighter and you light the crayon. And I just thought putting some little drips of, it's almost like hot glue, I guess, when you do that. It's just almost like dripping down, just like fake blood and going down on the rocks, just to give it a color and just, uh, you know, the whole uh, ambience with, the, <laughs> with the, the craft itself. So I'm gonna get that done. I'm gonna show you at the end what it totally looks like. When I come back, we are gonna start on the actual Jenga block coffin shelf if you it's similar to the same kind of idea of my jenga block boat if you've watched that video but we'll come back and we'll start building that one all right so let's start our second coffin now this one's going to be a shelf um it's going to be the same the same um build as the other one minus there's going to be shelves so we're just going to do them i have these little tags only just to uh keep me organized in the number of counts i'm not sitting here counting while i speak to you so the top part of the coffin is going to be 10 across by another 10 so 20 blocks and that's just going to go at the top now there's going to be two sides now this side has eight and eight so that's 16 on one side and we're just going to put it underneath like we did last time and another eight plus another row of eight 16 that's 34 for the i'll call them top sides i don't know if that's even i can't see and then we're going to add a shelf here now this shelf is 16 across by another 16 so that's 32 and we're gonna put it, glue it, oh, come on. I can't see if that's exactly even, guys, because the camera's there. But you're gonna put it right on the edge. Come on, I don't know why this one. Okay, and then we're gonna do the bottom sides. And the bottom sides, both are 17. Oh, I got hot glue on here. Oh, I'll have to scrape that off. By another 17. And that will be angled like that. And then the other bottom side is 17 with another row of 17. So that'll be 34. And then the bottom one will be 8 with another eight glued and that one will fit exactly like that now we are going to add a shelf here now this shelf will be i'll call it this is the top shelf this will be the bottom shelf so or middle shelf i guess and this one has uh 10 across by another 10 so that's 20 but we won't we won't glue this one until this is fully glued because it will just sit nicely in there 
and we can glue it once we get the whole thing done. Now I'm just gonna do like I did the same for the first coffin is I'm just gonna use some weld bond and then I will go back over it with hot glue. All right, so I got it glued on. Now it was a little bit wobbly, so I reinforced all the corners on the inside, the outside, both sides here, as well on the inside, there, and there, just with hot glue, so it is sturdy now. Now the next, the shelf that we're gonna put in uh, is the 10 by two, which is the extra 20. So a total for this one is 188 blocks. The one I did with the skeleton is only 68 blocks. So just less than a box for the other one. So we're gonna do kind of the similar idea. Now I'm just trying to figure out the best way to put this in. So it's a little bit gappy there, but you're not gonna see it. And you're just gonna hot glue this one in because it's it, when it's glued, I'm trying to find the best way, there we go. And I can't look right here because I, I won't hot glue it because I need to put my head over it. But it you can glue it both in the inside and the out. Once that's done, we're gonna do the same repeat. I really liked how the Mod Podge, um, Mod Podge, sorry, the paper mache really worked. This time I'm just gonna use, I got a big bottle of white glue because I ran out on the other one and it worked just as well fine with the paper towel. So I just got all my paper towel ripped up. I am gonna do all the outside and the inside. We're not gonna put the back on it just yet because I'm gonna try something different with the back, similar idea, but a little bit different. So I'm gonna hot glue this in and do the inside and the outside with the paper mache. So I just wanted to say uh, before you put that the um, the paper mache on is pick a front. I just put a I just put a black marker so I know this is the front only because on the back of all the pieces in the back you want to make sure that your board is flat and you don't have any bumps from the paper mache. All right, so what I did was I did the same process as I did with the first Jenga block um, coffin. So the second one, I did the exact same process with putting the Mod Podge, painting it black, putting the Mod Podge to give it a nice shiny coat. I did do all the insides as well. So the next step I did exactly like the last one was cut it out prior, well, you could do it afterwards too, cut it out, use an X-Acto knife, don't use scissors. Now this is what I have. So I wanna do the back a little different. Uh, the other one was with the satin and the foam. This one, I'm just gonna use some Mod Podge and put some black glitter. Now this black glitter is from uh, Michael's because DT only has the little packs. The, they're like, I think five or six little things and you never get a bottle of black. So I wanna do the glitter. You can do any kind you want. Um, I was gonna do a different color, but I'm gonna stick with black because I found something that I wanted to do um afterwards but we're gonna just paint that with uh, mod podge and glitter and then we're gonna do something to the board before we put it back on all right so while i let the back of the coffin uh, dry with the glitter on it i did want to put some lights in it i thought it'd be really cool if i have lights so what i have these are from Dollar Tree. They're just little fairy lights with little purple, um, little purple bats on it. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to put the lights, which would be easier, but that's up to you. Um, I'm just going to use these ones. I think they're really cute. So I'm not going to take this off because this, uh, I figured out how I'm going to glue it. So I started over here and just clip it. And I'm going to do it on the inside so that we can place it on. So I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna glue it right on the inside at the back and I'm just gonna use some hot glue. Go all the way around. Oh, this one came off. Here on the top shelf. And then we're gonna come down. Don't pay attention to this one yet. I'm gonna come down on the inside here just put the wire over the back shelf here. 
It's going to go to the bottom. It's going to go here. And then it's going to go over the shelf here and go here and then over the shelf here for with one more light here. Then we're going to work on the inside here. And this will be on the bottom because I want to kind of like all around, all around and all around. So this is the best configuration. I only played with it for five minutes, but works for me. Now this will be on the bottom, this shelf here. Now I'm just going to end up sticking this one in there when I glue it. Now, yes, this comes out the side. These are the actual battery pack operated ones. Like I said, I got them from, I got them from Dollarama. I didn't see anything. Like I said, one store only had like a couple things for Halloween and then they were just putting out their Thanksgiving stuff. So I'm going to let it come out here and I'm going to glue it and then glue it down here. And then once I put the backing on, I'm going to flip it over onto the backing all the way down. And I'm just going to glue the part, which side? Whatever side opens, this side opens. I'm just going to glue it on the back of the foam board on the back down here on the bottom because it is heavier and you don't want to be uh, putting it up here. And plus the wire is long enough that that will just be on the back. And I think it will turn out really good. And then once you just turn it on, hold on. I'm gonna, I just thought the purple ambiance in it with the black backing, plus you'll get the reflection of the glitter on the back of the coffin. I think it'll look really good. I just wanted to show you. So I did get it all glued in, as you can see. Looks good, but you can see the little silver wire and that will probably annoy me i'm assuming i don't want to see it anyway so i'm just taking some dt black paint and i'm just painting over the wire as i go along and i will do that all the way around so you can't see the wire from the other angle when we turn it over and put the backing on i am just going to use some hot glue to put the backing on and I will just also use um, I will also use just the um, uh, sorry guys it's late at night here I will also just use the battery pack and put it at the bottom as well and just make sure like I said before that the battery that when you open it is facing outwards all right so I just wanted to show you I let the backing dry on the back of it overnight I haven't put the glue pack on there because I had it flipped over and I had something on it to make sure it dried flat. Now, I just wanted to show you with the lights off here, the lighting's not the best, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like when it turns on and I think it turned out really well. I really like it. Now, I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to just go through the stuff that I'm going to put on the shelf and then I will do the end of the video. We'll show you both the coffins a little bit better uh, upright, both done. All right, so there's a couple things I'm gonna put in there. They didn't have, like I said, they had only like a couple little, um, they only had like, I'm just gonna show you this one they had there. They had this, they had a couple different little bottles like this, um, and that's pretty much it. They didn't have too much out, so I just took some stuff that I had on hand. I did go to a couple different dollar stores and they didn't have much, so. I dig out what I had and then I just improvised what I wanted to do. So uh, during drying time, these are just the little the little wood hangers that they have from DT. I had a little sticker that would just obviously what you see here. So that will go on the shelf. Um, I made a little Jenga block uh, so-called book, if you want to call it. Just there's uh, five Jenga blocks just glued one on top of each other painted it black, had another little sticker, and that will just sit on something in the shelf, which will be um, this little, uh, I guess it's, uh, I don't even know what you call it, the little um, timer thing. I'm just going to stick that on the shelf and just stick the book on top. Uh, I went to my local thrift store because I was trying to look for different bottles. I found the bottle, this one from DT, too big for the shelf. 
Um, it just fit perfectly, but it was just too tight. So that's why I opted out not to use that. I went to Value Village and found this cute little bottle and I just filled it up with some uh, floral gel beads and just put another little sticker brain juice on it. I didn't even take the sticker off yet. And I'm just gonna glue a little spider on it. Uh, another thing, this one came from Dollarama. I thought it was super cute. Dollarama had some of their stuff out, but they didn't have everything, but I just thought it was the Black Widow Venom. I'm just gonna throw some, I think, bones or something. You can't really, because it's on the bottom shelf, you can't really see uh, too much what's in there. So I'm just gonna stick some stuff in there. I don't know. They came out with some cool um, um, pea, or not pea, reindeer moss in different colors. I don't know if you guys saw any. Here's just one, for example. So I don't know about sticking something. I wish they had purple because I was trying to keep the purple theme going, but I thought they were kind of cute. I don't know if I'm going to use this or not. Maybe another project. Um, I got the little tea lights from DT. Now, this one is from Dollarama. I got it last year. Um, I haven't seen it out yet this year. It's just a little, uh, I guess, kid's head on it. You know, it'd be cool as if you had those little dolls. You know, everybody was making them look like um, Halloween sitting on one of the shelves. And I'm just going to show you. I don't know why they make them so hard to turn on. But with this in there, and I know it's going to hard to see, um, just to light up the lights, I thought it would be pretty cool. It it's a multicolor. It comes with a two-pack from DT. They change multicolors. And once I get... So I'm only going to put this stuff. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but once you see it, it does fill up pretty fast. In between the cracks in the shelf, I am just going to use some Spanish moss. I don't know if you saw my Jenga block houses that I made, plant stands. Um, and I just used some of the moss that will make it pop. It's not too much and it's not too little. because so I just find it looks a little bit bare. So I'm going to just stick some uh, Spanish moss in there. And um, I'm probably, I have these little rat might just sit on the side. Oh, and I have, I'm going to put this just draped over draped over the top of the coffin. These are just from uh, a dollar store from last year. I think I used it when I made the Halloween um, Halloween chandelier last, last year. So I had some left. I'm just gonna drape it over. Now you can put anything you want in there. It's up to your imagination. I got a pumpkin. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it on the side. I did, I thought this was pretty cool. So I was trying to look for a crow yesterday and I could not find a crow anywhere. I found a huge one, but I wanted a smaller one. Um, in my stash, I had some little birds that, um, were all kind of different birds. The feathers were really long, so I just cut it more narrow and, um, he's just a little bit wet still. And all I did was just paint him black to look like a crow. So, and this one, this bird, I know they, they sell them at Dollarama. Um, I have yet to see them at Dollar Tree. And uh, so I just thought, and he's just gonna sit up with the chains on top of the coffin. So let me get everything put together and uh, I'll show you the final result with both of them. All right, so here's the first coffin. So I just wanted to show you, um, I, I didn't end up cutting the bangs. I just ended up tying it in the back with a ponytail with some of the hair. I just painted a little flower that came off DT white, showed you the ring before. I thought it turned out really well. Let's see what the other one looks like now. All right, so here's the other one. I think it turned out really well. I did find a big giant spider that I ended up putting up just on the corner there. And I had this little guy that um, just from last year and just put the little mouse there. I thought it turned out really light and nice. It's hard to see right now. If I, I don't know if I can shut off the lights, if you can see the head glowing with the eyes. Let me see, I'm just trying to turn off the lights. I don't know if you can see the eyes glowing. They're just very faint, but I think it turned out really well. I also, um, I also want to make, so I did take some reindeer moss and I just dabbed it in paint and I got some purple reindeer moss. So there's a good idea for a hack if you ever want to change the color of the moss on uh, another craft. Let me know which one you guys like better in the comment, in the comments. I'm not sure which one I like, but I think I think they turned out both really well. I have a bunch of other Jingle Block ideas lined up for this uh, fall and Christmas. 
Let me know what you guys think. You guys have a great day. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all the comments you guys send me. And uh, happy crafting. Bye.